When I told my parents that I was gay and I was queer, they did not react well. And they still don't react well to this day. That's not a part of me that they're very proud of. Part of their frustration with me being queer is my parents came all the way from Haiti, escaped a dictatorship, built a life out of nothing in Canada so that we could have like a really good roots, really good basis, really good education. And then the minute that I finish my education, I leave and I start all over again in another country. And not just any country, but the country that, that Haiti fought from to get their independence. And, uh, and all of a sudden they see their daughter go into a lifestyle that they deem is potentially dangerous um, and potentially uh, at risk. I'm Melissa Lavo. I am a queer Haitian Canadian singer-songwriter living in Paris. I am in Italy. I'm in the city of Rome. I'm staying at the Villa Medici for a month, for the month of July. And I am writing songs that are all about Edmonia Lewis. Um, if you don't know who Edmonia Lewis is, it's probably because her history was erased from the pages of Italian history. Uh, she was a Haitian American sculptress. She was black. She uh, was queer. She was a cross-dresser. And she worked in Rome in 1867. So 150 years ago, Edmonia Lewis was not necessarily at the Villa Medici, but she was down the street on, uh, working on close to Villa del Babuino, and she was probably one of the only black women in Rome at the time. The final result of this residency is going to be an album um, of song about Ammonia's experience in Italy, but also um, keeping in mind the experiences and testimonials I've gotten from people. So I've been interviewing a lot of uh, Afro-Italians, uh, black Italian uh, creatives, blacks who live here, um, and getting their idea of, of what it is to create work here um, in a country where people are constantly telling you you're not from here. Um, me and Monia have a lot in common, even though we are living 150 years apart in two separate centuries apart, um, and Monia and I have just the basics in common. So the fact that we're both queer, Haitian, Haitian North American, um, black women. Um, she was a creative, so she's a sculptress. I also am um, an artist, a musical artist. Uh, we both have parents who come from somewhere else who brought us to a country, and then we've both moved from that country to Europe. Um, so we're both black women working in Europe. Uh, to get our work discovered. I'm about to release Radio Siwel, which is a project uh, that's around the songs that could have been and that have been, for sure, sung during the American military occupation of Haiti uh, from 1915 to 1936. And the songs that are sung out of that project um, that I found some of them I've just like imagined that somebody, that somebody must have sung the song. Some of them um, I was told that they were sung because people wanted to be like if you're gonna squash Haitian culture and try to replace it with American culture with like Supreme Christianity and so on, we're gonna be extra Haitian. And so extra Haitian means talking about voodoo as a culture, not just as a religion but as really a daily culture. So. This project is basically it. Like all these songs are related to the culture of Voodoo, like working the land, um, people resisting the occupation. And for me, it is a, definitely a connection with my Haitian ancestry. But more than that, it is a part of history, Haitian history that I don't know.